guys and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Jenny and this is Arnold the Praying Penguin and we create videos every Saturday about prayer, about exploring the Bible and about living out our faith. And today we want to look at one example of how we live out our faith and that is by being part of a Christian community. So you've met some of Arnold's community in previous videos. You've met Bernard and Octi and Leo. But today Arnold wanted to introduce you to some of the newest members of his community. So we have Zelda, the zebra, we have Toffee, the slothy, and we have Diego, the dragon. Now we obviously don't have favourites here, but do comment below and let us know which of these guys you think is the coolest. So for most of us, our main source of Christian community is probably the church that we attend. But at different stages of your life, and for different people, this could also be your youth group that you attend. Or it could be a small group, like a house group, that meets on a regular basis. So today we're going to be looking at why Christian community is important, why we need Christian community, and how we can go about finding it. So let's start by digging into the Bible and seeing why we need Christian community. The first reason that we need Christian community is so that we can serve one another. 1 Peter 4 verses 8 to 11 say, Above all, Love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Being part of a Christian community gives us a wonderful opportunity to serve one another, to use the gifts that we've been given to support each other, both practically and emotionally. If we're part of this community, we will see other people's needs and how we can help in those situations. Church communities in particular also regularly give us the opportunity to serve one another, whether that's helping at events or helping at worship services. We can help each other to engage in worship in different ways. The second reason that we need Christian community is to support and encourage each other. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 say, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Galatians 6 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. In a Christian community, you find a whole group of different people with different skills and different needs and different backgrounds, all coming together, united in their love for Christ. And we are able to encourage one another in our faith and in the situations we face each day. We all share this one thing in common our faith and we can use that to encourage each other in all the things that we face. Having this community that you can come back to and share your struggles and your celebrations with and be encouraged, that's a really valuable thing to have. The third reason why we need Christian community is so that we can support one another's practical needs. In Deuteronomy 15 verses 7 and 8 it says, if anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them, rather be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. And verses 10 and 11 continue, Give generously to them, and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. All of us can face hardships and difficult situations at different times in our lives, but God has called us to be generous to one another, open-handed, sharing what we have with each other in our community. And through this, we support each other's practical needs, whether that's financial or other ways of practical support that we can give whether we can share our food or even open up our home to someone else. 
The fourth reason that we need Christian community is because the church body needs all of our gifts. Romans 12 verses 4 to 6 say, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. This passage and others in the Bible tell us that Christians all across the world form one body. And this analogy is used to talk about the different gifts that we have. Our arm has a different function to our head, or our leg, or our chin, or our nose. If we had five arms but no legs, there are certain things that we wouldn't be able to do. So if we choose not to be part of a Christian community, this body of Christ, the body of the church, is missing something. It's missing the gifts that we are bringing to the body, and there are things that it therefore won't be able to do. Christian community is a wonderful place to realise what our gifts are, to develop them, to learn more about them, and to be able to put them into practice, using them to serve each other, whatever that gift may be. Whether it's a gift of hospitality, or administration, of prophesying, of teaching, a good Christian community will enable us to use those gifts, will encourage us in them. The fifth reason that we need Christian community is that it supports and builds our faith. James 5 verses 13 to 16 say, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you ill? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And then verses 19 and 20 continue. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, someone should bring that person back. Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sin. So as part of a Christian community, we build each other up, support each other in our faith. We can confess our sins to each other, pray for each other, pray for healing specifically it mentions in this passage, and we can correct each other. If one person is turning away from their faith, we can help them to come back and refocus on God. We can point out maybe the things that they're doing wrong and help them to get back on track. I think it's also really encouraging to our faith to be surrounded by other people who believe in the same things that we do. We're united by that faith in God. We can hear other people's stories about how God has been working in their life and that encourages us and builds up our faith. And the sixth reason that we need Christian community is so that we can pass on our faith. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 to 9 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So this passage talks about how we outwardly show our faith to other people and about how we talk about it on a regular basis and impress it on our children. And being part of a Christian community allows us to pass our faith onto younger generations, both our own families and other families in the community that we're part of, as well as being able to reach outside our community and share our faith with those around us, inviting them into our community so that we can share our faith with them, whatever their age. This is a big reason that I think intergenerational community is really important, and intergenerational worship, because it allows us to share our faith with people of all ages, learn from people of all ages, and help younger generations and newer Christians to learn about faith and about God through our actions and the way we talk and the way we act, just by being together as part of a community. The book of Titus also talks a lot about how we should be teaching other people, mentoring younger Christians, passing on our faith to those younger generations and people less mature in their faith. 
supporting them and helping them and discipling them in their journey. So we've looked at why we need Christian community, but how do we go about finding this kind of Christian community? Where do we start? So for this, Zelda, Toffee and Diego all want to share one tip each for how you can go about finding Christian community. Zelda's top tip is to go to church. Zelda loves coming along to church with us because she loves being able to worship with lots of other people and getting involved in the band and our youth group and she loves chatting to lots of people when we have refreshments after the service. Churches are a great place to find Christian community, to find other people worshipping God that want to worship God with other people. I would always recommend, where possible, starting with your local church. And unless there's a really big issue with this church, such as they're teaching things that are completely unbiblical, then trying to become part of that community is the best idea. Because that way, the community that you're worshipping with is the same community that you're living with. And it means you're better able to serve the community that you're a part of. So once you've started going to a church, get involved as much as you can. Volunteer for different roles, help out at events, join different teams, join a house group and get to know a smaller group better. Attend prayer meetings and learn about the different prayer needs of your community so you can be praying for them. So next up, Toffee's top tip is to talk about your faith. Sloths may be very slow, but they're also very chatty. And Toffee loves to chat to people about what she gets up to at the weekends, how she's helped out at church, all the different people she's met. Being happy to speak out about our faith and mention it in general conversation as just part of our lives is a really helpful way of meeting other Christians. Because if you're asked, oh, what did you do this weekend? And you're happy to say, oh, I went to church and I helped at this and I did this. That may make other Christians feel more confident in saying that they too were at church over the weekend. There's been plenty of times at work where I haven't known someone else is a Christian until I've said something first about how I've gone to church. This is a great way to find Christian community in different places that maybe you wouldn't have expected it. And Diego's top tip is to be the community that you want to find. If you turn up to a church and the community there doesn't look like the kind of great community that we were talking about earlier and reading about in the Bible, it can be really discouraging. But if you can act as that community, if you can begin to start those things, you can encourage this kind of community life within the existing community. You will attract other people that like the way that you're living and you'll hopefully encourage other people to live out this biblical style of community. If the church isn't serving each other and allowing people opportunities to use their gifts, how can you encourage that? How can you identify other people's gifts and maybe suggest ways for them to use those gifts? No community is ever going to be perfect, mostly because none of us are perfect humans. We all make mistakes and we all have flaws. Community is always something we'll have to work on and try and improve on, but you can be the start of that. So those are our ideas for why we need Christian community and how we can go about finding it. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from Arnold and all of his community. And we will see you next week for a new video. Bye!